Okay folks, we had minor earthquakes yesterday in both Arkansas and in western Texas. On the coast of Massachusetts, a couple dozen uh, dolphins actually beached themselves. They don't know why, but a lot of the dolphins uh, didn't make it. There was a 4.6 earthquake in Barbuda last night. It's the largest earthquake in about two months to accompany the earthquake swarm that they're having in the Virgin Islands and the Puerto Rico region pretty much daily. Two new cases of H5N1 bird flu, one in India and one in Cambodia. And just to the south of that in the Malaysia and Indonesia region, despite the fact that we have many uh, volcanic alerts, we've yet to see one of those volcanoes really rock and roll. Folks, the Phobos grunt is expected to come back down to Earth today, Sunday, January 15th. Uh, now, initial projections have it landing somewhere in the Atlantic Ocean, about a thousand miles south of Buenos Aires, but they admit that that is very, very preliminary. They're not sure about it at all, and we only have a few hours left. Let's, uh, let's keep our eye on this. Moving over to the solar wind telemetry from ACE, you can see there the yellow. That's the solar wind speed, and it is decreasing sharply uh, as we came out of a coronal hole stream last night, a pretty good one. And as we came out of that coronal hole stream and the solar wind speed uh, became a little closer to ambient levels, you can see the temporal variations in our magnetosphere disappeared as well. Folks, you know the story with the critical frequencies in the F1 layer. They're the highest that we've ever recorded. But now we have something else interesting happening. Normally, the F2 layer is a lot higher than the F1 layer, it's common sense and that's what we tend to see. But over the last two to three weeks, it has been just like a blanket right on top of the F1 layer. And this is definitely something to keep an eye on over the next few weeks, maybe even months. Folks, the tiny little active regions on the northern central part of the sun and on the uh, so uh, southern part over to the left there, those are in decay, and those are the solar active regions that came out of nowhere yesterday. They're leaving just as fast. Now, despite the fact that those are in decay, these two solar active regions coming over the northeastern limb uh, look like no joke whatsoever. And even while they were on the far side of the sun, they proved that they could uh, have geo-effective space weather. Well, folks, we've got a lot of people asking why you can see little dots of light, little stars through the sun. And I'm sorry for not quite getting what you meant at first, but I, I think I understand it now. Folks, look at all these different wavelengths you can look at the sun in. Uh, this one right here just happens to be 193 angstroms on the SDO AIA, and this is just a function of what wavelength you're looking at this in. If you could look at them all together, uh, like you would be doing with the naked eye, it clearly would not look like that. You cannot see stars uh, through the sun. But the sun was pretty quiet last night. Uh, we have about a day and a half, maybe two days, before another coronal hole stream hits us from that dark trans-equatorial coronal hole turning to the right there. Solar active regions aren't producing too many flares, but we do have those two big ones turning a limb, and we have magnetic filaments everywhere. Be safe, everyone.